Hi, looking to build B2B CRM strategies? Although the fundamentals are really important, the devil is in the details, but neither the fundamentals nor the details are hard to get right. I asked Dr. Google what advice he'd give someone looking for B2B CRM strategies and the essence was five points. Work out what you want your customers to do and build your CRM to manage that progression. Segment your database according to where they are in their customer journey. With acquisition, B2C is mostly about data and segmentation and B2B needs these plus opportunity and process management. In customer service though, the differences are far less stark, that is, there's more in common. And finally, focus on predictive analytics, clever productivity tools that you can find through the App Exchange if you're using Salesforce, and train your team. Well look, some of this is gold, but there are some simple steps that you need to take to get your fundamentals right that are missing from here. Let me show you why. Good article, well written, thanks Matt. Um, work out what you want your customers to do and build your CRM to manage that progression is one of his two really useful points. And the second useful point is segment your database according to where they are in the customer journey. So I wholly agree with both of his points, but he argues in principle without saying it that the customer journey is the buyer's journey and I think they are fundamentally different things. Customer journey is key. Think about prospects, customers, advocates, even lapsed but there might be multiple buyer's journeys within each. So take a customer or even a prospect, they might go through the journey four or five times, but still be a prospect. A customer might go through the journey a dozen times before they become a non-customer, lapsed, or before they become an advocate. So the buyer's journey and the customer journey are not the same thing. Customer journey, again, prospect, customer, advocate, or lapsed. Buyer's journey, new name found, interest established, positioned in category, gap acknowledged, need agreed, offer understood, preference formed, decision made. Think about all those stages. They are all valid for customers and non-customers. So firstly, although I like his two points, I would say split the buyer's journey from the customer journey. The CRM should clearly manage both. Our second log. Gonna be faster on this one, but it's a good topic. Uh, the difference between B2B and B2C customer service. It's great, but it's not what I was looking for. It's what Google served up. It's not uh, David Young's fault that this was served up. Um, look, it's not really my thing, customer service. I'm more an acquisition guy. But there is a valid point to be made from reading the article. And that is that I've always imagined or always believed B2C and B2B CRM strategies are fundamentally different because with B2C you really only need data and segmentation. With B2B you also need process and opportunity management. But in customer service, I, if I believe David Young's article, which I think I do, the differences are less stark. So useful, even if it's not what we were actually looking for today. Um, from Suzanne Lewis at 1CRM, she is essentially um, arguing points that are irrelevant to today's argument. She's talking about marketing strategies in the broad, and not her fault. The reason that Google served this up was that the name of the company is 1CRM. So when you're talking about B2B and 1CRM, we got this article. I specifically am looking for clues on B2B CRM strategies. So I get why Google served it, but it's not what I want. So I'm um, gonna skip that article. Uh, blog four is um, using CRM to improve the B2B customer experience from Insightly. So valid. They argue to be consistent, to measure at every touch point and to make it personal. And whilst I guess that's a decent argument for why you need a CRM at all, you, somebody listening to this video blog, you're already way past that. You know you need a CRM, you've got a CRM, you might be in your third version of CRM. So you need a more sophisticated conversation than that. So again, no fault of the authors, they're targeting a simple market, but that ain't you. So there's not a lot for B2B CRM strategies here. But the next one, there was. Um, there is, uh, so firstly, I would recommend you read the article. Um, uh, it's simple, short, well-written. Um, 
I like their focus on predictive analytics to use or to be on the lookout for, let me scroll back a little bit, um, that's predictive analytics, to be on the lookout for clever new tools that will automate your sales force's activities and therefore save them time. There are lots of new ones coming out all the time. Definitely a space to watch, like that recommendation, and train your team in whatever tools you get. Really good advice. I'll give you my spin on that in a second, but let me just quickly honour those five contributors. Here's what they're saying in essence. Work out what you want your customers to do and build your CRM to manage that progression. Segment your database according to where they are in their customer journey. With acquisition, B2C is mostly about data and segmentation and B2B needs these plus opportunity and process. In customer service, the differences are less stark and focus on predictive analytics, productivity tools through the App Exchange and train your team. So the essential thing I want to correct there is basically this difference between the customer journey and the buyer's journey, and it's an important one. A customer is or is not a customer, but when they are a customer, they're still going to go through journeys in each of their buying processes. So the buyer's journey occurs multiple times whether you're a customer or not. I actually like where this dialogue is going around customer journey, but I don't want it to be confused with buyer's journey. They're both important concepts and they are different. Segment your accounts or divisions into customer journey stage and consider these prospect, customer, advocate and lapsed. Because as you can understand you'd market to each of those journey stages differently. Segment your leads, now talking specifically leads not contacts nor opportunities, segment your leads into stages in the buyer's journey. Have they only shown interest? Have they already shown that they're troubled? Where are they in their journey in terms of buying on this occasion? Carry this lead segmentation around the buyer's journey through into opportunities, not into contacts or accounts. Measure how effectively you move buyers through their journey and consider in particular lag, that's how long it takes, and leakage, how often you fail at each stage. Integrate your CRM, your marketing automation platform and your website. Tie those three things together. And finally, market to each stage in the customer journey and the buyer's journey differently. In your funnel plan, map out how you're going to move buyers through each stage in their buyer's journey. From new names found all the way through to closed deal, how are you going to help them move from each stage to the next? Do that in your funnel plan. If you don't have a funnel plan, by the way, you can get a free one at funnelplan.com. Here's the URL. Go to funnelplan.com and get a free one there. Consider having a different funnel plan for each customer journey. That is, the buyer's journey and the lag and leakage are probably going to look different for customers compared to non-customers, whether those non-customers are prospects yet to buy for the first time, lapsed at the other end, or active advocates. Each of those customer journey stage, it probably deserves its own funnel plan. Again, go to funnelplan.com for your free one. That is it for this week. I hope you enjoyed that and got something out of it. I had a little bit of fun. Um, lots more lined up for next week. I look forward to seeing you then. Until then, may your funnel be full and always flowing. Our thanks this week to Ellie Chai for her research. She was an intern. Thank you, Ellie. Uh, our contributors, back to basic approach for CRM strategy, Matt Button. We've got David Young. Suzanne Lewis, Insightly, and Ohad Oren from Ondigo. So thank you for your contributions, guys. Um, there's one article I didn't mention in the, um, in the on-screen stuff, um, worth having a look at, and that's why you should map your, your CRM stages to the buyer's journey. Worth having a look at there, that's on our site at Align Me. Thank you, Annika Dobby, for your amazing production every week. My name's Hugh McFarlane, and it was my pleasure to script and present this week's show.